I really hope this is a case where most of you just intuitively know to arithmetize. I'm a bit worried that some of you are going to put the trap answer, which is the very obviously wrong 166. Now, I get why you might think that. You're like, oh, if it's 166 times the side, then the area is also going to be 166. But no way is that going to be the answer. We're still in the first module, but we're at question 17 out of 22. You know it's going to be more complicated than just pulling the only number out of the question and putting it into the answer. It's like, that's, there's no way that's going to happen. So what we should be doing is thinking about this with more concrete dimensions so we can actually do it and find the area. So start with something really simple. We have square B, right? That's kind of our starting point, so square B. Well, if we need square A to have lengths that are 166 times that, that's a big difference. So why don't we make B as kind of small as possible? Why don't we just make it a one by one square? And what's the area of a one by one square? Well, length times width is one times one is one, right? So that's really easy. Then when we do square A, well, Square A is going to have a length and a width or a side length that is 166 times that. Well, what's 166 times 1? It's 166. Now, if we're doing area is length times width or side squared, however you want to think about it, now you're going to need the calculator. There's no reason for you to know 166 times 166, but I'm just using my regular little calculator here and I get a big number, 2,000, or sorry, 27,000. 556. Now because we picked the best possible number for square B, it's really easy to just say, okay, well that's just then the answer here because the area 27,556 is 27,556 times one. So it is just kind of as is. If we had picked a different value for the side length of B, we would have to do a little extra math to kind of figure the rest out. But don't do that. Don't pick a worse number for yourself, right? This is why I always say we really default to zero and one when we're arithmetizing because they're easy numbers to work with. We can't have zero be the length because that doesn't make any sense, but one is the next best thing and, and surely it works. So that is the answer here. It may make you nervous because it's a big number, but that's kind of the point. They wanted you to be nervous. They wanted you to not have an intuition about these squares. And they're hoping, I think, that you pick 166 kind of out of panic. But we should know if we're near the end of a section, we're going to have questions that are harder. So a number 17, there's no way that 166 could be the answer. It's just way too easy. So at the very least, use that as a way to kind of gauge um, what you should be doing to solve these kinds of questions.